Hey everyone, Roman Jenkins here. Welcome back to Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, and welcome to the first night mission, actually. These are going to be constant in the game. They're not too bad for the most part, but this one is particularly horrible. Most of that is because, well, this game was made in 2006, and this mission has a lot of little bugs to it, and there's a lot of issues with how the map was designed and how it plays. And we'll get into those as they come to us. Uh, rest assured, I will be talking about those because they bugged me when I played through this level twice. So here we go, we're going to start off with a briefing like every mission. Okay, as per General Martin's orders, you'll proceed to the rally point and recover the C4 you'll need to blow the rebel bunkers. Objective, reach rally point. Hey guys, I've got incoming video, hang on. Patching in. And we also received word moments ago that the U.S. Embassy sustained an attack by rogue forces. They were repelled by soldiers loyal to the Mexican president, who has reportedly asked for limited American assistance to quell the insurgency. Hey, we made the evening news. Let's go check out some new stuff for us. So you'll notice on the far right there we have a marksman. That is the first one we're going to see this game, and she's useless. We also have a few silenced weapons. We'll definitely be taking advantage of those for this level. Now the silenced, uh, there's nothing new really there. They're silenced. We also have a couple sniper rifles, as I've scrolled through those a couple times here. And those will come back to haunt us later on the level. We're going to be taking a scoped silenced scar. It actually is very useful for this. Like most games, enemies won't notice you immediately if you have a silenced weapon. And it's useful for this section because you're mostly in a stealth mission. Position is covered by the crossfire created by the two bunkers. If we don't take them out, they'll cut us to pieces. Your objective: destroy the bunkers. All right. So you have what looks like a couple options to get up here to do these things. You don't. You have one path you can really take, which is this one. If you go to the right, you're going to get waylaid by those buildings. And you won't be able to really get around the edges. And I get paranoid about this mission a lot. There's people who end up, there's marksmen in this level, similar to the previous level where there are a couple guys on buildings and in windows. And they're really bad here because with the darker graphics, you can't really tell where they are. And your character won't always spot them until he's already getting shot. And this is one of those games that, because of the health mechanic, getting hit a couple times early on can be a death sentence for later in the game if you're not careful. It can make you paranoid and over-rely on things like your teammates. So these guys don't see me yet, but because I didn't change to single shot, they do. Luckily, I take them right off of that thing. Now on the left and right right now, you're noticing the breath meter, the, the different color-coded bars there. I haven't really mentioned those yet, but you'll notice that if I stop running, Scott will start breathing heavy, and that actually affects your breath meters on the left and right once again. When they're green, it means you have full breath, you're good to go. Yellow means you're kind of running out, and red means you're pretty much done breathing, and you can't hold your breath anymore. Now, this all works together because if you start moving forward very quickly, as I'm about to do, and go into scope mode, you won't be able to hold your breath as long. I thought that was a cool little uh, feature the game has, but it doesn't really change much because you can scope in pretty, pretty close on everything without holding your breath and all it does is zoom in a little bit for you. So let's pop this last guy, and we're going to plant some C4 after we move our guys. If you don't tell them where to go, they will go right at the C4 with you and stay there. And that actually happens later in the game. Oh, hi truck. I, if you don't blow those things up, the red arrows show on them for the rest of the level. So that means I spend much of the level looking at that thing, wondering if it's going to come attack me because I can't tell where exactly it is. That's a mistake on my part, but I don't trust these guys to not shoot that chain link fence. Fall back on so here we go, up the hill again. That's not on the door. One position. more bunker to go, Scott. Repeat, destroy the second bunker. Let's do it. And going up this hill, not the best move in the world, but it works out for us. Okay, Scott, let's finish off that second bunker. You see, as I mentioned before, the maps in this game aren't the best in some spots. Or at least they're not up to the standards we expect. There's some backtracking, but it can be a little confusing if you don't know exactly what you're doing. 
This is definitely a game where you're supposed to look at your tack map a lot. So I realize here that I'm going way off the rails, but I found this guy. And this means one less person to worry about later on, and because I have a silenced gun, it means I don't have to worry about the other people knowing about him. And here, I could have taken out some more people from this spot, or I could have set my marksman there. Uh, but for the most part, it's kind of a false start, because I have to run down there anyways. So I'm going to bring my team here with me. And because I can't direct my marksmen specifically, it means I have to bring them with me, and I can't just leave them all up there. So this one isn't actually bad. I'm not worried about this. But I am worried that because the AI will randomly wander around these areas, that I'm going to get completely fucked by that. So I send in the team first, even though none of them have silenced weapons, and I'm ready for whatever. And it turns out these the, uh, the enemies were actually just congregating around the machine gun like they were in the last spot. So all I have to do is get in close enough to take a couple easy shots. There we go, one down. This guy decided the safest place was right at the place his buddy got shot from. And down. So that's three down with minimal effort. Let's move our team forward, and let's look for the last guy. There he is, dutifully manning the machine gun. Oh, I got him real far. So I was wrong, you can actually man those in the Xbox 360 version of the game. I had previously stated that the PC version you could and the Xbox 360 version you couldn't. I got that backwards somehow, despite the fact I've never played the PC version, so I have no real idea what's going on. And here's why I usually direct these guys somewhere else. They will run straight at that explosive. And dolphin dive! Whee! Yeah, you can dolphin dive in this game. Black Ops 4, Intel is ID to an electric Regroup. generator in the northeast corner of the rebel camp. Captain, you must cut the lights before we infiltrate. Copy that. Okay, Scott, move yourself into position and get a visual on the target. Okay, let's move out. Green light. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I forgot that truck was coming completely. And it's an annoying truck. As you can see, I got shot by that one. This game relies so much on you being in cover and knowing what's happening that something like that can really ruin your day. And because I tried to send my guys at it instead of to blow it up, uh, I almost got fucked completely on that. So now that we've cleared that out, we can actually go for the next objective, which I was on the way to before anyways. And we're going to get into the goggles. If you watch, and this is something I noticed while doing this, when you have the goggles up, your character model loses a bunch of polygons, the world around you loses a bunch of polygons, and the frame rate increases, and so do the, the, the smoothness of the, all the animations. And I got kind of obsessed with that. So I only have sniper rifles available to me. There's no good reason to have a marksman with me. So I took her out, and I'm going to hold on to one of these two snipers, and I just couldn't decide which one I hated less. Sniper rifles in this game are interesting. You can shoot through light cover with them but only some light cover, and only sometimes. And the crosshair that shows up, not exactly accurate. What you're going to get instead is an outline of the enemy. And if you can see the enemy outline, it means you can hurt him. But the sniper rifles aren't 100% accurate, which drives you a little nuts because you get very few shots in comparison to what you get with a, a rifle of any other nature. So once again, you can see you lose a lot of polygons when you go into thermal mode. And I just really like that. It, it improves the frame rate so much. Go quiet, Roger that. Okay, good. You're in position. Target the generator for air support. Apache 1 Niner, Enemy orbiting armor directly closing. over your position, Captain. You call the target. Brown, ready for orders. Yes, Captain. Yeah. You just got four more minutes of that. So all you have to do here is send the Apache to blow up that power station and take out some guys. Now usually I would just pick up one of these guys' guns and be done with it for the rest of the level. But I'm going to stick it out with the sniper rifle as long as I can hold on to it. And as you can see, you can shoot through walls. Also you'll notice that my health did increase from that supply drop. That is the one way to get ammo back into this, or back, uh, health back into the game, and it's a fairly easy way to do it. Got 
So once again, I have support from a helicopter, which is much appreciated. It means I will not be doing a lot of my own work for the rest of this map. The truth of the matter is that this game plays much more like a real-time strategy than a shooter in some sections, especially when you're overpowered or the enemy has armor out. And I really appreciate that because, let's face it, you're not going to be taking out a lot of tanks on foot. So you're given a few options up ahead on how to handle things, and it's all up to you. Now that we've taken all the power generators out, we have a pretty dark path ahead of us, but that just makes it kind of easy to do what we need to do. Oh look, another transport truck that I will freak out about for the rest of the level. How fantastic. Let's see if the Apache blows it up. I, I full out don't remember. What I remember the most about the rest of this level is some stupid shit the AI does. So I have the Apache going over to this thing. We're not going to really mess with those guys out in the distance there. Alright. Blow that up. Bam. Now you have... you've been given a tank as well here. Yeah. You've been given a tank, and the tank is useful if you know you can control it like you do anything else. The game doesn't tell you you can use it to target stuff, unlike the Apache or pretty much any support for the rest of the game where you will be told explicitly use me to target something. And it gets a little annoying if you don't know you can do that because on some occasions the tank has a better shot than the Apache or the Apache gets shot down. So it's vital to make use of both those resources, really, for the rest of the level. But sometimes you might not know it. And if you look here, no one's on these guns. But as soon as I cross an invisible threshold, there are guys everywhere. And I'm out in the middle of a field when that happens. So that's just fantastic. I'm here. We're running real short on time, Captain. I have reports of hostile reinforcements coming on your position. Yes, sir. Oh! Advance! On the move. Hold your position. We'll be here. Alright, I've parked the Bradley up pretty far so he can take out anybody who comes too close. All I have to do is take out these gunners. I still get annoyed by the fact that I have to double click to zoom in or out. That just seems a little annoying. Take the shot. Now unless you tell the Bradley to shoot something, it will not fire on these guys. So we can be getting shot at by anybody and will not shoot back. And of course the sniper rifles will lose a lot of damage shooting through cover. Especially something as thick as sandbags. So I can't get a good shot on that guy, but I can tell the Bradley to shoot him. Wait for him to die, and have somebody shoot that guy. It, at this point, it is just a real-time strategy. The difference being that my teammates will not be moving, so I only have vehicles to support me. That's actually not accurate. Uh, Marcus Brown, the gunner I've selected, will not move for the rest of this mission. Joe Ramirez and Bo Denken, Jenkins geez, will actually be following me. Uh, however, they will be following me in the loosest sense of the word, and you'll see what that's all about later on. Captain, advance! So right here, I really, really, really wish I didn't have a sniper rifle. It's useful for that one section, and that's about as far as it goes. So I pick up an LMG, which is a complete and utter mistake. Never again. Watch why. No sights, and it's not exactly accurate at any distance. The tank actually got that guy. Don't give me credit for that. Don't let the LMG fool you. What I'm going to want here is a 36 with a scope. So I have a little bit of this left. There's a marksman up here. He can really screw up your day if you don't know what to expect him. And one down. Bow's down. But I'm going to go ahead. Let the Bradley move up. And let somebody else deal with him right now. Because I'm getting shot to shit. So this guy actually has a 36k. Fantastic. That's good news. I know I said it was my responsibility to heal him, but I don't feel like it. This area is deceptively swarming with enemies. 
And you can see about four on the screen right now, but that's not exactly accurate. There's more like 15 or so in this area for what it feels like. And not all of them are very accessible. And your squad is definitely not going to help you on them. So I have to do a lot of the work here. And that's bad. Right there I got hit again. So the Bradley is pretty much at the limit of where it will go here. And I have to go plant a couple bombs. Once again, I thought that was a path I could take, but the game cuts you off. So I have to go out this way through two machine guns and a few more guys after that. Not exactly my ideal situation. Okay. There's... Yeah. Two guys, as you'll notice. And I can't see the last one quite yet. There he is. Pro. There he goes. I don't know why he didn't get a red diamond. I'm kind of confused by that. Because at least two people could see him at the time. So here's our last two C4 tar or three C4 targets, these Horowitzers here. These are meant to keep the tanks out of the city for the Mexican rebels, but as you can see, it looks like anti-personnel should have been their main concern. And go. Back on me. I'm desperately trying to get Marcus Brown back on me here, and Jose Ramirez almost got stuck on that wall too. This level is decidedly glitchy for your allies. I lost, in my previous playthrough of this, I lost all three of them on one piece of cover back in that open field. That is not the way you want to play this. But they also have some pretty bad pathfinding outside of that, as you'll see in a moment. So I'm trying to get the Bradley to take these guys out for me so I don't have to do it. Alright, let's plant this. And as you can see, there's two guys behind it. But I fear they'll find a way around it or they'll get away from it. You know, rudimentary AI stuff. I was so very wrong. Now, I heard something and two of my guys are down. I almost didn't go revive them. Because I, I didn't understand what they did. Soldier needs help. Go! As you can see, I did go revive him. I tried to get Marcus Brown off his ass again, but he's, you know, over near some sandbags playing around still. Thanks. I needed that. Well, for the most part, games have kind of gotten away from that with their squad AI. If a squad can't find you or can't catch up to you, it will just teleport to you now, uh, such as in Mass Effect that came out a year after this game did. Uh, but in this game, not so much. Your squad is in a fixed location. It's not it won't go incorporeal, and it won't follow you unless uh, unless you're meeting certain specifications. So that can get kind of annoying. It doesn't happen too often, but some of these missions, it's just goddamn annoying. Especially in a game where you rely so much on your squad. Here I'm just playing smart. My standard procedure is to try to gun these guys down quickly, and if that doesn't work, I can zoom in a little bit. It seems to be an okay strategy. To me. Bombing on you. Maybe you can not die to this explosion. Alright, looks like we're going to get out of this pretty easily. Blow this thing up. Don't get too close there, guys. Advance. Moving, Captain. Get, get back, cousin Bo. Really, cousin Bo. All units. Enemy position has been neutralized. The road is now open to the city. There may be isolated pockets, so stay sharp. Excellent soldiering, Captain Mitchell. Warming on you. All right. So we have to get out of here hit our helicopter transport and look there's Marcus way back there just running into a wall he's stuck in that guard kiosk I never remember telling them to get into gu that guard kiosk but I've seen them stick on everything out here so it's not just that 
So this mission's pretty much over. We've got another night mission ahead of us, but it's not too bad. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon. Awesome stuff, Captain. We're on the move, Captain Foster's position. ETA, 10 minutes. A batch of lead to Ghost Lead, and we're done here. Need to go back to the shop and rearm and fill up. Pleasure working with you. See you at Chipotle Pack. Bulldog, VIP-1 must get airborne. What's the holdup? Airspace is still not secure for takeoff. Suggest we hold VIP-1 until my best and brightest can finish the job. Okay. I've now got VIP-1 on the line. He agrees. Out. Men, Camp Chapultepec is the assembly area for Mexico's 50 M1A1 tanks. Our contribution to the North American Joint Security Agreement. Since the Mexicans haven't repainted them yet, I don't see why we can't borrow one. Or a couple. Captain David Foster will have operational command of this mission. Black Hawk 4, copy. En route to Camp Chapultepec. We have incoming video. We're also hearing disturbing reports of reprisals taken against civilians in many government ministries, which would make whatever claims Auntie Barros has for his government's legitimacy highly unlikely.